Battle Bears. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I'm currently a specialist in the United States Army. This video is going to be all about my reclass. Yes, I finally reclassed. I know I've been talking about it for a little bit, but it's done now. We're here. We made it. But surprisingly, there's a lot of people in their current MOSs that don't like it and I've been getting a lot of questions on how I reclass, what I reclass to, what was the process, how long did it take, things like that because there's a lot of people looking to change their MOSs. So I'm going to go ahead and answer some answer some questions that were given to me. I'm sorry, listen, it's super early and I'm trying to hurry up and record this video before I have to head off to work. Um, so I have about about an hour and 15 minutes before I have to walk out of the door. So I'm, I got some time but trying to get through it. So I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions that were asked to me um, and I'm also going to give you a little bit of information on my reclass. But first, as usual, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if any of the information that I am putting out is outdated, wrong, or may be incorrect in some type of way, please just comment it down below and correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna get into this video. My current MOS is 74 Delta. Your MOS is the job that you actually do in the army and I recently re-enlist to reclass. I know I've been talking about it and I finally made it, so I'm super excited. But I reclass for, drum roll please, 68 Charlie. I, I really wanted that MOS um, and I, I got it. I mean, I've been working pretty hard and I got it. But let me give you a little backstory because it wasn't as easy as I thought it would have been. So since I joined the Army, I've been wanting to reclass actually. When I signed and signed for 74 Delta, that wasn't, that wasn't the MOS that I wanted to do. Originally, I wanted to be a medic. I think it was like my scores and my security clearance and things like that. I wasn't able to get the MOS that I wanted. So 74 Delta was the best of all the small amount of options that I had to choose from. So I chose 74 Delta and I pretty much chose 74 Delta um, just to get my foot in the army. I'm like, all right, well, they said I can change my MOS later on down the line. So I'll just go ahead and I'll take that and, you know, just, just, just get in. I highly recommend against because again switching was harder than I expected it to be so one tip would be try to get the MOS that you want the first time I didn't have the line scores and things that I needed to get this MOS as I previously stated in a few of my other videos it is very important that you take the ASVAB serious because it's those scores that determine what schools you can go to what jobs you're eligible for and things like that so having that 110 or above is is really is really good so I took the fast class once but I retook the test twice. Uh, so I, when I first got to my duty station, I signed up for the ASVAP immediately. That was one of the first things on my to-do list when I first got to my duty station because I knew I, I already knew I didn't have the score that I wanted to have. I did a lot of research and I, I knew I needed to do better. So I signed up for the fast class. There's usually a really long wait list for the fast class, so I would say if you were taking the fast class, try to get on that wait list immediately because I took, I signed up and turned my paper in, uh, I want to say that was December of 2016 and I didn't get a seat in the class until July. I think it was July 2017. So yeah, it, I was I was definitely waiting a while just to take the class. So yeah, get on the wait list ASAP if that's what you wanna do. When you take the FAST class, what you do is you sign up, you get permission from your commander, of course, because you need permission to do everything being in the army. You take it to the education center, they sign you up for the class, they give you a school day, and then you just start showing up. I'm so sorry if I'm talking fast, but yeah. Um, I got about an hour to finish recording this video. Anyway, so I went to the education center in in the morning. So my class was pretty much from 8.30 and it goes into about 1300 ish So you'll be there all day. 
the class is a month long so you would be doing that for a whole month and then afterwards you will uh, you'll take the test the way they organize the class let's say you need to raise your ST score she's going to focus more or he's going to focus more on what sections you need to work on to raise that ST score if you need to raise your GT score they're going to tell you exactly what it is that you need to work on getting better scores in to affect that GT score so the class is really good at breaking things down to make sure you do achieve your goal so at the end of the fast class I took the test now when I first took the ASVAB coming into the army I had a 103 GT I took the fast class and um I took the test over and I got a measly 105 yeah I didn't improve much at all but I'm going to contribute that to some of the technical the technical difficulties that we were having when we went to take the test because when I went to take the test about six of us not failed but we didn't get the score that we wanted to get because the they had just switched the computers to a different program so it turned a two three hours test to seven hour test because we kept having to get off this computer and get on this computer or that computer would freeze and you would have to get off that computer and get on this computer so it was it was to the point where I just I just I just really couldn't I couldn't do anything and if the computer freezes and you take too long on a question your whole screen is going to turn red because I think you only have like 30 seconds or something like that to answer each question is super it's kind of it's kind of stressful, but when the computer was freezing, we wasn't getting to answer. We weren't getting to answer the question, so I, I definitely didn't get the score I wanted. But after your initial test, you have six months to take the test again, if that's still correct. You have six months to take the test again. With that paperwork that you sign to take the FAST class, I think they say you can take it within 30 days of taking that first test but you have to have a reason to justify why you need to take it sooner. So I went on maternity leave because I was pregnant at the time. So I went on maternity leave. I was um, taking a, I took a algebra course. And after the algebra course, I'm like, oh, this is easy. Math was my biggest issue. So I was able to get down to formulas and stuff like that from taking that math class. And I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and go back and try to take this test. And when I retook it, I got a 120. GT score and I think like a one like 21 ST but regardless I got the score that I needed and I actually went while I was still on, on maternity leave and tried to submit a request of voluntary voluntarily 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 reclass um but of course that was denied it was so stupid so the next option I had since I wasn't allowed to voluntary reclass was uh wait until my re-enlistment window open and re-enlist to reclass so that's what I did my re-enlistment window open in July I'm just re-enlisting and signing a new contract and um was that October yeah I, th I think it was at the end of October yeah it was at the end of October or November it was it was very recent and that's how long it took me to get to this this place i struggled with my security clearance was my hold up everything else fell into place perfectly except that security clearance and there was just so much going on and it was so frustrating because i'm like why is this so difficult when i say this process for me was so stressful it was so stressful and then i'm going to also say the lack of support for my chain of command because i'm new in the army i don't know what's going on so when i would ask about hey Am I supposed to be doing this or who's the new retention guy because there's nobody in that office. Hey, that number you gave me for retention didn't work. Um, they're telling me that I need this security clearance. I don't have one. I'm supposed to have one anyway because I'm chemical. I don't know what to do, but I wasn't getting any help. So I kind of had to outsource and go to like different people that were a little bit more supportive in what it was that I was trying to do. So it was stressful. It was definitely stressful. Oh my goodness from s1 to s2 to it was just so much but i digress i digress even though my school day is so far away i'm still okay with that i guess my school day is going to be in 2020 it's only the end of 2018 so that means i have to stay put here for a little bit over a year which it's fine i got the mos that i wanted so you know it's, it's fine i got a little money too so you know it's it's all right it's all right that means i just have a few more things that i'm able to get done prior to me leaving and get a little bit more organized and situated so i'm excited to see how this is all about to play out um 
and you know where this is about to take me a few of my goals that i do have prior to leaving is getting into the hospital and doing some hands-on training um i'm still in school uh, working on these prereqs and stuff for the IPAP program because that's another thing that it is that I'm working so hard to achieve. So, you know, it's it's not it's not horrible. It's not horrible. I always try to turn my negatives into positives. So I just look at it like that just gives me a little bit more time to focus on other things before I have to focus all my attention to 68 Charlie. So I hope that video wasn't too all over the place because I know I was talking hella fast. I was probably even stumbling over a lot of my words, but again, I'm on the timeline and I'm about to be in uniform soon and head off to work. But there are a few takeaways that I definitely didn't mention. One of the first ones is you switching your MOS or your job also depends on what the MO, the M I N out calls say and the in-out calls it tells you whether a job is under strength balanced or over strength you can go from a over strength mos to a balanced or under strength mos but you can't go from a under strength mos so there's a few different ways you can re-enlist as well there is a voluntary reclass that means you're not within your re-enlistment window you're basically putting in a 4187 requesting to reclass or change your mos and you submit that to your chain of command and i believe it is approved by your commander understand that everything has to be approved by someone the second way you can reclass is to re-enlist to reclass that's what i did so i resigned um i re-enlisted into the army with the promise to me that i'm able to reclass if you are medically unable to perform your duty in that mos but you're still well enough to perform in the army they will allow you to change your mos also understand that this is easier said than done um this process it now depending on what circumstances and stuff are ahead of you this can be super easy it can be done with with you know with no problems at all but this can be trying and just understand that paperwork in the army takes forever and if your paperwork has to go up to branch to be approved and then come back down that can definitely take a while it can take up to 30 days i believe for them to even take a look at that paperwork so just know that this isn't something that can happen at the snap of the finger or it is something that can happen at the snap of a finger just be aware and be ready to wait no you do not get to pick your duty station after from my understanding, you don't get to pick your duty station after you reclass. I believe they give you like options to make you feel like you're to make you feel like you're making some type of choices in your life, but it's a good chance that you're not going to get either of those choices. <laughs> either of those choices that you make. So understand that your school date, so if you sign your school date, it can be three months away it can be six months away it can be a little bit over a year away like mine is just under just know that you'll you'll have to stay put where you're at until that school day comes i would also say just make sure make sure you look at me go through all these just make sure you try to choose that mos you want the first time around so you can not have to go through all these technicalities and go through all this craziness like i'm having to do it's so uh, and I think that's it. I'm super unorganized with, what is that? Um, nah, nah, I did that one already. Um, I think I did everything on that one. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm answering everybody's questions. Am, 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 oh, wait. Okay, so if you volunteer, <laughs> if you voluntary reclass, I don't think you get a bonus. So with my MOS, it was a bonus associated with it. But if I would have voluntary reclass, I wouldn't have gotten that bonus is what I was told by retention. But I did get the bonus since I signed forward with my re-enlistment. So if you voluntary reclass, those little perks you get, you may not get. You'll just be extending and you'll be placed at the needs of the army anyway. So you just won't get a bonus. I think that's it off this one. Yeah. Yeah, you won't have to do basic all over, all over again. They'll just send you straight to school, straight to AIT. <sighs> done <laughs>
All right, guys, that's it. That's all I have for you today. If you have any other questions about reclassing or any questions about anything in general, just comment down below. Please do not hesitate. I'm pretty quick at answering questions and things like that. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow